so strange, everyone's talking about the mysterious Miami Dolphins names. Rather, in the same team, the players would stand up for each other in the same way that Brian Flores protected his pet games against the Bengals. But not, completely opposite, in Miami Dolphins is having a conspiracy against number one quarterback Tua Tungavailoa. Teammates expressed dissatisfaction, some even criticized Tua Tungavailoa's play style. All anonymity. But they do not know that, a star cannot lead a team to glory. But it is the chemistry between the players that brings Dolphins to the Hall of Fame. Is this a trick to attract the reputation of a newspaper in Florida or is it true? Stay with me, bosses. Let's take a look at what happened, and I'll provide reasons to believe in Tua Tungavailoa in the second half of this video. That is an affirmation, Tua Tungavailoa is a true warrior of the Dolphins, and nothing can knock him down. The Miami Dolphins are coming off just their second win second winning record in 12 seasons in just the second year of the Brian Flores era, ending with a 10-6 record but ultimately missing out on the playoffs. While there are certainly plenty of positive takeaways from this past year, there are also plenty of places for criticism, some of which is directed at rookie quarterback Tuesday Tungavailoa, according to a recent report from the Miami Herald. The report in question cites three unnamed players expressing their concerns over whether the former first-round draft pick is the right man for the job. One player basically said as much when it was revealed that the 22-year-old would be the starter next season. I understand what they said, one player told the Herald. But I don't understand why. The players made sure to clarify that they haven't quite given up on their young teammate, they remain hopeful Tungavailoa will improve, is what the Herald story says, but the commentary from the anonymous group shows that there isn't a lot of confidence in how he stacks up to some of the best quarterbacks in the league. From the Herald report, but the concerning spoke to the Herald as they are not convinced Tungavailoa is going to be great in the future. They said they were unimpressed by Tungavailoa during training camp to the point they thought he wouldn't be ready to play in 2020. They said they were, caught totally off guard, as one put it, when Tungavailoa was named the starter the seventh game of the season. And another said that before the season finale when players were informed by Flores that Ryan Fitzpatrick would not be available against the Buffalo Bills, he was disappointed because he believes Fitzpatrick was better than Tungavailoa. It's not an ideal situation. Concerns were expressed over the ex-Alabama prospect's quarterbacking talents beyond his accuracy, which isn't a terrible skill to have, for what it's worth, and the ceiling is being set very high for the QB by teammates, one defensive player said he isn't impressed with Tungavailoa's ball velocity or arm strength or ability to make off-schedule plays with his legs. So he ultimately questions whether Tungavailoa will ever be able to match the feats of other quarterbacks in the AFC, Patrick Mahomes or Deshaun Watson. Those are the boys we got to beat, right? This player said. It looks right now like that's going to be a big challenge. Josh Allen set multiple franchise records this season, Patrick Mahomes can already boast an MVP award and Super Bowl at just 25 years old and Deshaun Watson is one of the most electrifying players in the sport in spite of the Texans' front office appearing to actively make life more difficult for him on the field. That's a tall task for anyone, including Tungavailoa, to live up to as a rookie. At the same time, there are some more rational criticisms of the 22-year-old, as one offensive player told the Herald that Ryan Fitzpatrick, who was at one point benched for, and brought back on to replace, the rookie this season, just straight up looked better than Tungavailoa did in practice. It was even at the point where he was frustrated Fitzpatrick wasn't available to play in the season finale, a 56-26 loss to the aforementioned Allen's Bills. Ultimately these concern so much weight, as the unnamed players are not the ones making the decisions. As far as people in those roles are concerned, Tua will be Miami's man next year. I think Tua has made a lot of improvement, really developed over the course of the year, so we'll just continue to try to make those improvements, Flores said. That's is what Flores said. So, do not believe in Miami Herald. It's fake news. Why? Here it is. Over the past month, there has been an innate buzz burgeoning nationally, but especially in South Florida, that can be summed up as a Tua frenzy. An 11-minute fan-generated YouTube video provides a visual. Tua is far by himself, never seen anything like this buzz from a draft pick here. There's no close second, said Dolphins color commentator and radio host Joe Rose, who played for the franchise alongside Pro Football Hall of Fame quarterback Dan Marino from 1983 to 1985. We have a rock star here in Tua. 
This team has been in mediocrity for so long. It's lacked the Dan Marino star power, the Ricky Williams star power. Two is the next guy in that group. Despite the love, it's too early to crown Tungavailoa. He hasn't even played an NFL game. Tungavailoa's arrival is defined by hope and hype. Even in his first month as a Dolphins quarterback, it is clear that if Tungavailoa lives up to expectations, he will be the face of South Florida sports for a while. How will Tungavailoa manage the pressure, the buzz, overwhelming positivity, eventual negativity and everything that comes with being hailed as the next big thing in a city starving for its latest sports superstar? The great thing for Tua is Dan Marino retired 20 years ago, Hall of Fame quarterback Warren Moon said. So it's not like he's following right behind a legend like Aaron Rodgers following Brett Favre or whoever follows Tom Brady. He just has to be himself. He can't be Dan Marino. Just be yourself and rely on the people around you. Tua is not alone under pressure. See what happened to Dwayne Wade? A Mount Rushmore of athletes who have led South Florida pro teams probably starts with Marino and the Miami Heat's Dwayne Wade, but the initial expectations weren't as high with either legend. Wade remembers it wasn't until after he led the Heat to their first championship in 2006 that he became the face of South Florida sports. He returned to Miami and hopped in his convertible with a buddy. Fans sighted him and rushed the car. He couldn't drive another block. I looked at my friend and said, yo, this is different, Wade said. I enjoyed it, but I knew it would never be normal in this city from that point on. I had to get used to being a celebrity. The perks were great, but the non-privacy was not so great. Wade County was born and didn't slow down. His presence remains large in Miami, but since he retired following the 2018-19 season, there has been an active superstar void. Back to, back to Tungavailoa, he's a hell of a player. Miami, especially at the QB position, really needs that. They need a leader. They need a player, Wade said. To come in as a young player and win a game in the second half of a national championship game, that shows some grit, that shows some balls. People have to really believe in you. Miami needs that. The Dolphins need that. Even though I'm a Chicago Bears fan, I was rooting for them to get him because Miami needs to get back to where the basketball program is. Wade's advice to Tungavailoa centers on how to handle fame, the future Hall of Fame guard says he would often deal with anxiety when he left the house. He felt the need to always be on his D-Wade even when he wanted to just be Dwayne. Wade said even though he wasn't expected to save the franchise, once he became a fan favorite, he had to figure out how to enjoy what you worked hard for, but keep a level of sanity at the same time. Wade is optimistic Tungavailoa will lift the Dolphins to a place they never re reached while he was with the Heat. If the Dolphins get it going, it's going to be Dolphins town. We did as much to make it a basketball town as possible, and Miami Heat is there to stay. But let's not get it twisted, Florida is football. Once they get their S, together, they are going to be big and bigger, Wade said. But those Heat guys, Bam Adebayo, Tyler Harrow, are going to battle him for it. He's got to earn it. How you put yourself in that conversation is doing something great, something that people have never seen before, and obviously winning. Tunga Vailoa passed his first test by eschewing his college number 13, Marino's number in Miami. Instead, Tunga Vailoa is paving his own path by becoming the first Dolphins QB to wear number 1. I understand number 13 is retired, and it should be. Dan Marino, he's the GOAT. He's like the mayor out there, and I have much respect for him, Tunga Vailoa said. I just want to have the opportunity to go out there and compete who has arrived in Miami has been met with some mention of Marino, and Miami has started 21 quarterbacks since the Hall of Famer retired in 2000. The Dolphins haven't had a Pro Bowl QB since then, which marks the NFL's longest streak. So while the expectations might seem unwieldy for a 22-year-old quarterback coming off a serious hip injury, this isn't just any NFL city. He's coming to a franchise that is thirsty for a star QB, and fans have been waiting on Tungavailoa for more than a year. When I got down there, the Miami Dolphins were Dan Marino's town and team. It's still that way, former Dolphins great Ricky Williams said. I was a running back, but no one has even come close to eclipsing the success that Dan had in Miami as a quarterback. Even more so than what I experienced, Tua has the potential to be a big part of what it means to be a Miami Dolphin for a long time. Williams had a great run as the face of the Dolphins.
Jason Taylor, Zach Thomas and Ryan Tanhill did, the national poll Tungavailoa has now. Rose says he remembers the buzz around Marino being relatively subdued when he arrived. The Dolphins, coming off a Super Bowl 17 loss, were led by their Killer Bees defense, and they selected Marino with the number 27 overall pick when he fell to them in the 1983 draft. By the end of his record setting 1984 MVP season, Marino was a superstar. When we went to New York, I saw the phone calls we got in our hotel room. I saw what movie stars and celebrities came around. People wanted to be around this guy, Rose said. We didn't have the media and social media that they do now, so it could be a lot more hidden. He was big stuff. He was a rock star. Marino is the standard, but Tungavailoa doesn't have to reach that level to be remembered in Dolphins history. As Moon and Wade have stressed, he just has to focus on being himself. So what must Tua do to against the discriminations? Moon knows all about highly anticipated arrivals. After five Grey Cup titles in the Canadian Football League, Moon signed with the Houston Oilers and became the NFL's highest paid player in 1984. With stars such as running back Earl Campbell and linebacker Robert Brazil already in Houston, Moon was conscious of veterans believing he was too full of himself. Moon's response was to work hard, including lifting weights with the offensive line. When people came in the building, I was already there. When people left, I was still there, Moon said. Yeah, I had a lot of attention, but they saw my work ethic. When I got on the field, they started to see I could really play. What you're trying to do is gain respect, and I think Tua will get that, too, because of his work ethic. Showing that work ethic and building camaraderie with teammates could prove to be more challenging for Tungavailoa this offseason with virtual meetings instead of in-person practices. But Tungavailoa helps teammates via text messages and phone calls. The other balance Tungavailoa will have to maintain is his unique marketability with Moon's advice, to go in there with your head down and work. Tungavailoa, who signed a four-year, $30.3 million contract, has endorsement deals with Adidas, Hulu, Muscle Milk, Verizon, Wingstop, Gillette, Lowe's, Bose and Call of Duty. He recently signed a multi-year, exclusive memorabilia and collectibles deal with Fanatics. He also has a documentary in the works detailing his journey to the Dolphins. Agent Ryan Williams and athletes first have handled Tungavailoa's marketing demands, and he has immediately become one of the NFL's most well-known young players. The people love the former Alabama quarterback, and that has shown up in the numbers. Tungavailoa is the top-selling NFL player in terms of overall merchandise sales since May 1 across the Fanatics network, which includes NFL Shop.com and online team stores, above Tampa and online team stores, above Tampa Bay's Brady and Cincinnati Bengals quarterback Joe Burrow, the number one overall draft pick. Moon remembered advice he was given by his agent, Lee Steinberg, who also represents Tungavailoa, to take things slow on building your brand and try to avoid reading the headlines or social media. I just want to make sure that he doesn't try to get too far ahead of himself. Football is what butters his bread, Moon said. If he doesn't do well on the football field, everything else will go away. Knowing a bit about Tua, he'll be fine. Tungavailoa showed humility throughout his college career. He has a connection to family and a desire to give back. I'm honored that the fans think so highly of me. But I haven't done anything, yet, Tungavailoa said. What I did in college can't translate to the NFL. It's a clean slate. I've got to go out there and earn my respect and earn the trust from my teammates. I believe that, once Tungavailoa hits the field, the hope is he gets to become the greatest from the greatest version of himself instead of being constantly compared to Marino. That weight is too heavy. But becoming the long-term face of the Dolphins and South Florida sports? That's well within Tungavailoa's grasp.